All right, so since we have the section properties calculated, now we're ready to apply the bending formula and determine determine the normal stresses. And in particular, we want to determine the maximum normal tensile stress and the maximum com normal compressive stress. And because our, we have a negative moment, that implies that our moment goes like this, where 6 kilonewton millimeters is applied here so that we have compression at the bottom and tension at the top over here. Okay. And so we and, and our maximum normal stresses are going to occur the furthest distances away from the neutral axis, which we it's right at the centroid here. So I will label this line right here as the neutral axis location. So let's go ahead and calculate this sigma, uh, the normal stresses at the top and bottom. Oh, but before, we also have to remember is that this y in the equation, the spending formula, the way that it's presented here, is is saying that f this positive y direction is oriented upwards here. Okay, and so at the top, when I want to calculate the neutral, or I'm sorry, the normal stress at the top of my section, so sigma top right here, you know, I have this formula. I have minus m max times y top over i. Okay, and the reason that this y top is positive is because it's up here and it's from the neutral axis, that's a positive distance, and this would be, the, when we substitute some numbers, this would be minus, minus 6 kilonewton meters times the distance to the top, which would be 50 millimeters divided by this I, the moment of inertia, 1.36 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth right here and I want to convert into millimeters so 1000 millimeters per meter and bam this number is 2.2206 kilonewton per millimeter squared which is the same thing as 0.2206 g gigapascals or 220.6 megapascals okay and so and this also by the way is also newtons per millimeter squared in case you needed a refresher on units so it's really convenient to keep things in kilonewtons and millimeters and newtons and millimeters right here and then and so you can see and the positive stress result indicates that this if this top location is indeed in tension right here and then we can go ahead and calculate the bottom right here and the bottom has right here because this is a linear relationship all the numbers are the same except for the location right here so it's really minus m max over i times negative y b all right or the distance from the neutral axis to the bottom which is 30 millimeters and this is going to be minus uh, minus 6 kilonewton meters times 30 millimeters times the unit conversion divided by 1.36 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth and this number here if you calculate the stress is going to be negative 0 0.1324 kilonewtons per millimeter squared and using the same stuff that you, I just showed you previously this would be negative 132.4 megapascals right here now that we know what the stresses are at the top and bottom, and we are ready to draw the stress profile, which we'll do next. Now we want to draw that stress profile, and so here I've gone ahead and redrawn the section for you, and the locations to label are probably the neutral axis location, which is right about here, and that location is, I'll draw a straight line right here, and this distance was 30 millimeters, is the neutral axis location, and to draw the stress profile, I want to draw lines, horizontal lines from the tops and bottoms of my cross section here and then this will represent the face of my cross section so if I took this T shape and I turned it 90 degrees uh, out towards you if you will and so my neutral axis line is 
just going to extend that out right here. This will be my neutral axis. And it's important to note that to note where the neutral axis, because that's the point of zero strain and therefore zero stress. And the very top of my cross section experiences a tensile stress of 220.6 megapascal. So I'll draw that over here. That point is 220.6 MPA. And so I have a stress here of 220.6 MPA, and it's linear from the neutral from the zero stress at the neutral axis like this so I have here this linear stress uh, tensile stress pulling here and then at the very bottom I have negative 132.4 in compression which means I have right about here this is 132.4 megapascals in compression so I am compressing the surface if you will and this line oh, oh that was dirty right here oh it's even dirtier okay so here's my new 132.4 and let me clean this up a little bit that one right there yay okay and so here my my compressive stress here is 132.4 bam bam and really these two lines should have the same slope so that I should technically I should be able to continue this like this right here and it should look exactly the same and this is 132.4 megapascal this is my stress profile now the stress profile is not a 2d thing this thing is actually this whole thing is extruded over the surface of the cross section here so I would have this portion of my area would have this triangloid ish kind of deal and then this portion of my cross section would be in compression and would have a t-shaped triangloid I guess is the way to describe it so here's my stress profile that you know we finished up already and now what's left for me to do is calculate the compression the force resultant in the flange and it's going to be a compression force because I have compressive stress you know because this stress is actually applied over the entire area it's like calculating the volume of the stress block over the flange region right here which I will highlight in orange and so if I could draw this in 3d what you really have is if this is my flange area bam like this here and straight yes right here and my stress over that flange area is this uh, trapezoidal volume looking thing you know line figure and there would be this trapezoidal uh, stress volume you know acting on the flange zone and what we want the force resultant is the the volume of this stress so FR from from a calculus perspective FR is just stress DA the stress function over the area here but it doesn't have to be that complicated it's really just you know if I can label this point Sigma 1 and this point is Sigma 2 which we know is 132.4 megapascals it's really the area of a trapezoid extruded over the width of the flange which in this case is 60 millimeters this depth is 20 millimeters so this this calculation is pretty simple you don't need to do an integral it's just FR is this cross-sectional area which is one half the average of the sides if you will Sigma 1 plus Sigma 2 which are in this case are stresses times the width of this 20 millimeters and then times 60 millimeter the only thing left is to calculate Sigma 1 and Sigma 1 is really right here at the 20 millimeter location right here this is this distance is 20 uh, oops 20 millimeters from here so this is 20 millimeters and this should have been this is really Sigma 1 and the way that we can calculate this location is by similar triangles and this location if the neutral axis depth is 30 millimeters this is 10 millimeters and so by similar triangles you know you could just say Sigma 1 over 10 millimeters is equal to 132.4 megapascals over 30 millimeters which makes Sigma 1 just one-third of 132.4 megapascals and that is if you plug that into a calculator I think is 44.13 megapascals and so now to calculate the force resultants just one half a 44.13 plus 132.4 megapascals which is newtons per millimeter squared yes and <laughs> 20 millimeters times 60 millimeters and when you work out some numbers and substitute this whole deal becomes 100 hundred and five thousand nine hundred and eighteen newtons which is really better expressed in kilonewtons one hundred and five point nine kilonewtons here 
And that is my compressive force resultant. So if I could, it'd be a squiggly line here. This would be FR. Bam. All right. So hopefully that has been useful and it helps you see the application of the bending formula and all that's involved. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. See ya.